My name is Hom Bahadur Rizal. So I'm from Tokyo City University, Faculty of Environmental Studies. Today, I'll talk about the thermal adaptation of the buildings and people for energy saving. This is the content of my talk. First, thermal adaptation of the buildings. Second, thermal adaptation of people. At first, I'll talk about the thermal adaptation of the buildings. Especially, I'll explain about the thermal performance of the buildings and their improvements. I'll relate them with the energy saving potential. As we know, the traditional buildings are well adapted to climate and culture. Generally, they are cooler in summer and warmer in winter without energy use. Thus, it can be key issue for the energy saving and sustainable building design. However, traditional buildings are decreasing dramatically, being replaced by modern buildings we will lose not only traditional wisdom and culture, but also create sharp environmental problems. The most important issue concern recognizing its good point and improving its existing deficiencies. We also need strong policy and sound research to sustain the concept and practicalities of traditional buildings. As for the example, I'll explain about the traditional dwelling in Nepal. Nepal is a small country, but due to the altitudinal variation, we have subtropical, temperate, and cold climate. It is Interesting that the open type dwelling are found in the subtropical climate, the semi open type dwelling are found in temperate climate, and the closed type dwelling are found in cold climate. These buildings are thermally adapted in its climate and culture. However, we need some improvement for the better thermal environment which are suitable for the modern lifestyle. This is the passive cooling effect of the Nepalese dwelling in subtropical climate. We have earthen floor, mud wall, basal, and the thatch roof. This is the variation of the indoor and outdoor temperature in a day. As you see, the indoor temperature in daytime is about five degrees C lower than the outdoor temperature. So the passive cooling effect are found in these buildings. I'll explain the relation between the outdoor environment and building design in extremely cold climate of Nepal. Most of the buildings have a courtyard with a balcony connected to the courtyard to obtain the maximum solar radiation inside the building. The people work and remain in sunny areas, such as rooftops, balconies, and street to feel thermally comfortable. The buildings are connected to each other, and only a few small windows are found in the external wall. This might be helpful in preventing strong wind from penetrating indoors and thus creating a warmer indoor thermal environment in winter. From here, I'll explain the improvement of the Nepalese dwelling in winter by simulation. These are the problems which we need to improve. Low insulation of the slate roof, 
gap in door, windows and roof and low indoor air temperature in night time which affect to children's and elderly health. Inefficient fire consumption, dust from the mud walls and floor. These are the improved models for the thermal simulation. We have proposed three types of the air tightness, three types of the thermal insulation, and two types of the integrated model for the improvement. As for the air tightness model, we have proposed the A, reduction of the open area above staircase, B, adjustment of the opening, and C, reduction of the gap area. As for the insulation model, we have proposed the D, insulation of the roof, E, insulation of the earthen floor, and F, insulation of the wall. As for the integrated model, we have combined all air tightness and insulation model as a G1 integrated improved model and G2, G1 plus reduced pyrrhot consumption by 60%. This is the variation of the indoor temperature of the best and the improved model per hour day. The nighttime indoor air temperature of the integrated model is 12.7 degrees C higher than the best model. When you reduce the fire consumption by 60%, it is 3.9 degrees C higher than the base model. Thus, the air tightness and the thermal insulation are effective to increase the indoor air temperature and energy saving. This is the actual renovation of the roof, wall, and floor of the simulated dwelling. We have renovated by using local materials and building technique. It looks very similar to the original traditional dwelling, but the thermal performance of the building is much more improved. This table is the energy saving by the natural ventilation in various countries based on literature review. The result indicate that if we design the naturally ventilated buildings, we can save the significant amount of energy compared to the air conditioned buildings. Most of the traditional buildings are naturally ventilated and thus we can obtain the similar result to these studies. The second content is the thermal adaptation of the people. I'll explain about the comfort temperature, adaptive model, and the adaptive mechanism. I'll relate them with the energy saving potential. At first, I'll explain the adaptive model for thermal comfort. X-axis is monthly mean outdoor temperature, and Y-axis is neutral or comfort temperature. Black points are the free running buildings and circle are other buildings. In the free running buildings, when outdoor temperature is 16 degrees C, the comfort temperature is about 20 degrees C. Similarly, when the outdoor temperature is 30 degrees C, the comfort temperature is about 28 degrees C. Thus, the comfort temperature is strongly related to the outdoor temperature. The regional and seasonal difference are found in the comfort temperature. In the conventional standard, the comfort temperature is around 24 degrees C throughout the year in different parts of the world. If we, people are comfortable in 28 degrees in summer or hot climate, we do not need to cool down to 24 degrees C. 
Similarly, if people are comfortable in 20 degrees in winter or cold climate, we do not need to heat up to 24 degrees C. So, we can save about 40% of energy for the heating and cooling. This is the comfort temperature in the Japanese dwelling by month in free running mode. It is about 17 degrees C in the winter months and about 28 degrees C in summer months. And thus, monthly difference is about 11 degrees C. The comfort temperature of the living room is higher than in the bedroom. The results indicate that the comfort temperature is significantly varied by month due to the thermal adaptation of the people. This is the energy saving by changing the temperature setting in various countries based on the latest review. Generally, about 10% of energy can be saved by changing one degree of temperature setting. The results indicate that significant amount of heating energy can be saved by lowering the temperature setting for the heating. Similarly, cooling energy can be saved significantly by increasing the temperature setting for the cooling. This is the adaptive model for the thermal comfort in Japanese dwelling. X-axis is running mean outdoor air temperature and Y-axis is comfort temperature. When running mean outdoor temperature is 10 degrees C, the comfort temperature is 19.2 degrees C. Similarly, when running mean outdoor temperature is 30 degrees C, the comfort temperature is 28.8 degrees C. The comfort temperature is strongly related to the outdoor temperature. Thus, the adaptive model which is proposed would be important control strategy for energy saving building design. This table is the energy saving by adaptive model of thermal comfort in various country based on the latest review. By introducing the adaptive models, significant amount of heating and cooling energy can be saved in the building. I'll explain about the principle of the, the adaptive mechanism which are related to the thermal adaptation of the people. Adaptive thermal comfort depends on the behavior, physiological, and the psychological adaptation. If change occurs that produce discomfort, people will tend to act to restore their comfort. The returns to other comfort is pleasurable. People are not passive receptor of their thermal environment, but continually interact with it. This is the adaptive mechanism in Japanese dwelling. X-axis is outdoor temperature. Y-axis is proportion of the use of the controls and the clothing insulation. When the outdoor temperature is decreased, the clothing insulation and the heating use is increased. Similarly, when the outdoor temperature is increases, the purpose of the window opening, fan use, and the cooling use is increased. People use the various adaptive mechanisms to regulate the thermal environment, which support the thermal adaptation of the people. So this is the conclusion of the thermal adaptation of the building. Traditional binocular buildings are well adapted to the climate and culture. They can be improved by air tightness and the insulation. The improvements are effective for the thermal comfort, health, and energy saving. 
By introducing the natural ventilation, significant amount of energy can be saved in the buildings. This is the conclusion of the thermal adaptation of the people. The regional and seasonal difference are found in the comfort temperature. By changing the temperature setting and introducing the adaptive model, significant amount of energy can be saved in buildings. People use the various adaptive mechanisms to regulate the thermal environment which support the adaptive model. Adaptive building design and adaptive thermal comfort of the people are important for energy saving building design. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much.